Hello, my name is Sean Quinn. Welcome to the second edition of the exciting new podcast, Hitting the Fairways, in association with Creative Landscaping Works in Letterkenny. I'm joined today by two stalwarts of golf in Alistair Henderson from Balbuffet and Sonora Golf Club and Conal Keeney of Nairn and Port New Golf Club. Gentlemen, you're both very welcome and thank you for taking the time to join me today to talk all things golf. Yeah, delighted, guys. Yeah, happy to be here. Great to see you. Um, we're back. At last, um, what a great feeling to be back on the fairways. Courses are in fantastic condition. Uh, greens are amazing. And even the weather has behaved itself sometimes in the last few weeks. Connell, have you had a last? Have you had a chance to play in the, uh, since the courses reopened? Yeah, Sean was delighted. We got out last Saturday in two balls. Uh, enjoyed it. It was lovely to get out on the course. Um it was, I think, September or December since we, we played last. So we had a, a nice outing last Saturday. Um, I might even get out this evening maybe for another run, hopefully. Um, it's great to be back. And I know everyone's delighted, you know, to, to, to get a chance to be able to have the fairways again. I nearly want to ask you, how did you play? But that's that was really pretty irrelevant, wasn't it? I, I, I pared the first and I'm not saying nothing about the rest of the game. Yeah. If only you'd pared the 18th that, that would have brought you back. There's always that one yeah. shot that brings you back. Yeah, no comment on that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go into that more detail later on. Tell me, Alistair, what about yourself? Um, are you back playing? Yeah, we got back uh, last Monday week there and uh, I got a few games. I was out at the weekend and I was actually out yesterday again. Uh, it was beautiful out there yesterday. The course is... Uh, like every other course at the minute, it's it's in good condition. Um, we we done a bit of work over the close down there on our fourth green, and we reconstructed it. And uh, it was open yesterday for the first time, and uh, it's it's different from what uh, you remembered it before. It's not just a the we easy par four that it used to be anyway. The greens, are, uh, the greens got very tricky on it. It, it, it never was an easy par four. No, now. it was not. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll go into that in a bit more detail later on. Um, mm -hmm. What's great also to see uh, back was was uh, Rory McIlroy over the weekend, who um, who who won his first competition in, in uh, it was over five hundred days, I think it was. Um, and and it's amazing the turnaround that he had within a couple of weeks, where things were they weren't great, and he got a new coach, and and things. Uh, his confidence had gone, but uh, talent is is always just at the end of the finger, and 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 he proved that again. That said, now um, the coverage of golf over the lockdown, it's it's been left a lot to be desired. Connor, what's your feeling on it? Yeah, I, I fully agree with you, Sean. There, I've I've had uh, various issues with Sky from watching the Masters right through to even last weekend at Quail Hollow. Um, Sky seem to tend to, to now just show the leaders. It's always, most of us would have an interest in, in certain golfers and how they're getting on. And, and they may be just off the, out of the, off the top five, six, ten, and top ten on the leaderboard. But Sky don't tend to show them. They don't tend to show the leaderboard. And I find that very annoying that you, have, you can watch four hours of golf and you have to go Google to find out who's on the leaderboard. And they may have just be outside the top ten. Um, and this is only recently, and I don't know why they do it. And then when they do manage to flash up the leaderboard, it's a quick flash. You don't get time to to, to study. Ah, oh, he's on the eighth hole. He's 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 got to you know he's a long way back. Or you don't. It doesn't. They don't seem to give you the chance, and they seem to concentrate a lot more. It's like as if they're taking it from the Golf Channel or something, and they're not putting the the resource into it anymore. That that that, that you know that the they used to. Um, I thought the Masters, the coverage of the Masters was poor this year. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree, you know, and, and even at the weekend watching, like my, I'm an avid uh, watcher over the weekend, and, and especially on the Sunday in the back nine. And it was it was bizarre because they were actually going to people on the 17th and 18th who were seven over and weren't even yeah. in contention. And, and all you yeah. wanted to see was the guys that were hitting birdies or were having difficulty under pressure and we didn't get that. Alistair, would you be of the same opinion? 
Yeah, that would be similar, all right. Yeah, I think the biggest problem is that Sky probably aren't sending their people over. And uh, as Connell said there earlier, they're taking it from the American channels. And I think maybe they just get what the Americans want to show, basically, you know. Um, they, they wouldn't be showing, well, especially in the Masters there, you know, you'd like to see Lowry and people like that. You, we yeah. didn't see much of them. And uh, now it's good to see McElroy back again. You know, it's, his, uh, his approach play was a hell of a lot better uh, at the last week there than it was previously. It was, uh, it was a bit like myself, actually, previously to that. It was, I think the stats showed he was 203rd in approach to the greens from 140 yards and i think he was third last week so i think that's the big difference in it uh, you know yeah i think he's won there a few times before so yeah, that's, yeah, I think that's, yeah i, I actually uh, heard that you you were lying is it 210th in the order of merit and battle buffet at the moment is that right maybe it's slightly outside that we've only got about uh, 400 members and i think i'm i'm well down the pecking order at the minute uh John. The great, the great but, uh, thing is that when you're down there, you can only go one way, and that's that, up there. that is for sure. And the, the guys will need to look out for. I'll tell you, I haven't much money left to be handing out to those guys. Sure, you, you don't need to play them for a few pound either. Yeah, it gets yeah. very competitive when you put a few pound on it. Oh, that's yeah. The same. yeah, it's the same with everybody now, Fred. I'm I'm in that school as well now. It's very hard yeah. to get five euros out of me. Talking of competition today, thanks to our sponsors. Um, it hit it. Uh, sorry. Um. Our sponsors who are um, Creative Landscaping Works, they are, they've been very kind and given us a, uh, a, a potting mat, which you can use in your garden, you can use in work, and you can use out in the patio. Great for, for stopping those three pots. Simply all I want you to do today is to answer a question. Who is a reigning US Open champion? And email your answer to hittingthefairways at highlandradio.com. So who is a reigning US Open champion? And it's heading the fairways at highlandradio.com. So as we get ready, guys, for competition golf, um, we said about uh, Bala Buffet had done a bit of work. Tell us more about that, Alistair. What's, what work has been going on in, in Bala Buffet? Well, there's been a lot of foundry work going on uh, during lockdown. There's uh, PJ uh, Fitzgerald there. He's our green convener and is a, a gang of guys out uh, they've been trimming trees, they've been doing everything around the course, and uh, there's a lot of changes made. They've took, taken away a lot of trees there at the back of the 18th tee box. The, it wasn't getting much light, and uh, now it, it was getting softer in places, but uh, the, it's shown changes there now. I was out yesterday, and vast improvement on it. But uh, as, as uh, mentioned earlier on, they re redeveloped the, the fourth green, and it they turned it into a kidney shaped green and it's there's heights and hollows and there's an elephant buried in the middle of it and one thing and another and uh, it's just not straightforward anymore um before it wasn't a, it wasn't an easy par four anyway but i'll tell you i think they'll have to revisit the uh, stroke index just for for that hole in particular anyway in the coming uh, weeks i would imagine you know That's yeah, that, that's that's actually a difficult hole because you you got to hit the ball in the fairway, and then your your second shot, depending on how far down the fairway you are, you could be you could be one legged, couldn't you? Because you could down it's all downhill. It's uh, I I don't have many pars on my scorecards there now over the over the years. Uh, you're in good company there, Sean. Now to be quite honest with you, you could be halfway down the hill, and then you're on a slope, and uh, then you skin one through the back, and uh, you're in real trouble then. But uh, no, it's 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 all good. It's all good progress, you know. And uh, the, 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 going back, you know, we're open now. What sixty two years? And uh, our forefathers that uh, you know created the course. Uh, that I think they would think it's uh, it's all progress, you know. Very good. And what's the power of the course? Power sixty eight. We've just the one power five. Uh, the, our seventh uh, around the lake, and we have uh, five par threes. You know, that our par threes. I would reckon any day you have a, yeah, if you par four or five of those, you're you're going to have a score in the par threes. They're not they're not that easy. They're they're difficult enough, especially the one round the back of the clubhouse. There, you're talking almost two hundred yards, and it's uh, it's 
it's difficult enough anyway. They're all fairly difficult. Yeah, I know all about that one. Um, about 200 yards right beside the clubhouse. And I can honestly say I've hit the wall, I've hit the trees, I've hit the bunkers, and I've never hit the green to this day. I uh, don't know if I'm hitting the wrong club, it's, but it's very challenging. Uh, I did have a chip in, which got me a bogey one day, and I was absolutely delighted because it was looking like a six or a seven. So it's a card wrecker uh, as a part of a par three. That is for sure. Yeah, I've been all I've been all those places myself now. I've been a few times, but uh, not lately now. But uh, yeah, you have you have the drain uh, there running to the right hand side of it, and as you say, there's a wall on the left, trees short right, trees to your left, and uh, it can be a bit of a card wreck, especially if you're playing stroke. Uh, it uh, it can add up a bit, all right. Big time, big time. What's the features? If you were to say what's the best thing about Bal Buffet and Snorla, what is it? Is it the is it the fairways bunkers or is it the magnificent greens? What is it? I, I think the, the course in general, you know, it's it's fairly user friendly. You know, it's not over long. Uh, we're we're about six, just under six thousand yards, and uh, it's it's a good test of golf. You know, you you've got to play. A lot of good shots there. Uh, you know, it takes most clubs in the bag to get you around, and uh, it's it's user friendly. For uh, over the years, we've taken away a lot of the rough that was in under the trees. You know, most fairways are tree lined there, and uh, I'd say 15 years ago, if you went in there, you could have been looking for your ball for ages, it slowed play down, and now we've done away with all that, and it's it's got more user friendly and. You know, it's it's more enjoyable for the the, the golfers. You know, of course, the, the the golden rule now is five minutes is all you're allowed, and you have to walk on and accept the penalty. Mm -hmm. Um, what? It's not five minutes anymore, Sean. Is it, you're allowed longer, are you? No, it's only three. Are you, sorry, three minutes. I stand corrected. Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, you you've obviously we're about to open for competitions. Um, Ballad buffets and all, or do we do you run uh, open competitions? And if so, when are they on? Yeah, we have an open competition every Tuesday up until four o'clock. Uh, after four, then it's for members only. And the I think we usually have an open competition maybe the last Sunday in each month. Basically, that would be what we have for open. Uh, we have competitions Tuesday, Saturday, and Sunday uh, for the members. And then we would have uh, other competitions then during the year, your scratch cups and stuff like that, you know. And uh, it's a funny year this year because we didn't really, I haven't seen a fixture list out. And um, what's what's the way the pandemic has been going? It's uh, But we're getting there, you know. Yeah, it's looking like the 7th of June, I think, is when uh, open competitions can start again. Yeah. It's great to see that the, your club will be ready. Um, I'm going to just test you quickly here. Do you know what the course record is? Hmm, good question. I think it's about 63 or 64. You're close. Yeah, yeah. Your first <laughs> guess is correct. Right. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. You know, I know I, I, obviously, you know what the course record is. It's, well, it's not because I hold it now, in fairness. Now, it's, uh, do you know who, there's, there's two people who have had a 63. It's well, Enda Meneman and uh, Yeah, I was going to say Enda would be one of them. Yeah, and do you know the second one? Donna Cleary, no. Derek Neal. Oh, Derek no. Neal. Oh, that yeah. must. Yeah. Derek hasn't. Uh, his, his dad, his father and mother plays golf. I think Derek has moved to Scotland uh, about ten years ago. Uh, Derek, Derek was a good golfer. Yeah. Very good. So that's that's a challenge for any golfer out there this year. Sixty three is the uh, the course record in Balbo Stenoller. We'd be delighted if somebody can beat that. Connor, moving on to Narn and Port New. Um, fair to say that. There's been major redevelopment in uh, on the course over the last three years. A, a design by uh, Gills Hands, who uh, was involved with Pebble Beach. Um, so tell me, what's a number? First of all, have the members been able to play during the the reconstruction of the course? Yeah, uh, I'm sure you're aware, Sean, that Narn and Purdue came into private ownership a couple of years ago. And over the last uh, 18 months, it's been under redesign by Gil Hans and uh, I think it's Jim Wagner. Um, Gil Hans will be pretty well known in the States-wise. I think he desi he's designed Pebble Beach. I think he designed 
the course in Rio where they played the Olympics. Um, it's now gone from a par 73 to a par 70 uh, with huge changes. That, you know, those of you who, who wouldn't have played it, uh, most of the holes have all been either repositioned or, or there's like the first hole now has been extended. The second hole, the green's been moved to the left. The third hole has disappeared. It's now a par five. And, you know, there's some, to me, I always liked the course the way it was. And, and posts where, as we get older, you get used to it. Uh, some of the changes are very, very nice. Some of them, that's a matter of opinion um, on, on people's different opinion. The first hole is, is, to me, is a great improvement. The 18th is now a spectacular par five, very, very difficult hole. Um, we again, as both as members, are just getting used to it because last year we, while a lot of the redevelopment was going on and then with the pandemic, we were still allowed to play it. And we still, a lot of the time, it was nine, nine or 14 holes. You know, we had we had to suffer a little bit, and we didn't always get the 18th, but now it's back up and, and the full 18 are there and all their glory. Um, the presentation of the course now to me is second to none. It's it's absolutely spectacular. Um, it's a good challenge, and I'm sure a lot of the, the the members in the county will be looking to to come down and and give their opinion on it. You know, I don't know if, if Alistair or Neil has had the chance to play it. Uh, like from our point of view, we we miss travelling to other clubs very much. You know, I always like playing Val Buffet. We usually play there four, five, six times a year. Uh, different classics and different uh, society outings that we have ourselves. And I'm from Glenties, and we have a quite a big society. We tend to play ball buffet every year, and we always we always enjoy it. Uh, we're looking forward to what people think of the changes in Port Um To me, some I'd be in favour of some. I, I would have the jury would be out on, you know. Um, yeah, I have to say that Con, I, it's a number of years since I I played, and um, I, I, definitely three or four times I've been down, and I was never lucky to see the sunshine down there. Uh, mm -hmm. and I can recall playing a par five, uh, wind into the face, and I definitely hit it seven times, six of which were good shots. I got to the green, and I walked. I think I walked off with a good putt for a nine. And, and, it, and I seriously only hit one bad shot during that. So I can't wait to, uh, as you say, it's, it'll be good to see what other people have to say. It's open. Um, the, the COVID has probably helped because from a development point of view, mm -hmm. it's been sitting for three or four months. The growth has been good for us. Um, quickly, have you have you a favourite hole out of the, the new layout? What would it be? Uh, probably the, the, the 18th now. I know we lost, but I thought obviously that was a good old, it was the old 17th. But the 18th now is a dogleg par five. And believe you me, you'll have three very good shots to get to the green. Uh, for me, of my handicap, a six is always a good score on it. And any day you get a six, you're happy enough, you know, to walk away. Is that, is that score um, six or plain off six? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry, similar to Alistair there. <laughs> But if, I score a six, if I score a six, I'm very, very happy. <laughs> and tell me, just on the club competitions, you obviously they'll be coming back into into play, in, 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 if not this week, over the next couple of weeks. Um, when open competitions reopen, is Portneau open for business for yes. visitors? Very similar to what Alistair just said there, Sean. Uh, uh, we have an open day every Wednesday. And again, Saturdays and Sundays, most competitions are open. Uh, the only close competitions that we do have are obviously our captains and our, our presidents. Um, all competitions are open. Um, again, with the pandemic and, and everything, we're only, uh, the committee is only getting together now and things are only getting organised to, to, to get them back up. I am actually not sure of the actual date, but I believe it's very uh, it's imminent, the date when they, when they start up again. Yeah, um, I I think the direction we're being given from uh, Golf Ireland is around the, the 7th of June for open competition. So I know yeah, I would imagine so. We're, we're, we're gauging up for that. 
So just a last question on uh, the course. Um, there, I believe there's a famous golfer who, who actually has the course record. Yeah, uh, the old course record, as far as I'm aware, and I could stand to be corrected here, was, as far as knows, Christy O'Connor Sr. And I think over the last, uh, around the, the, on the, on the par 73, I think it's, I think it's Simon Thornton that holds that course record, or Damien Mooney, I'm not 100% sure, but it's one or other. Uh, I should have checked this out beforehand, but I forgot. Um, I know Christy held the old course record on the original course because he used to hold pro proams back there back in the late 60s and 70s, and he was a frequent visitor. And I think David Faraday was another one. Um, I know that David Faraday has written a book and, and, and he has a chapter on Yarn and Port New in it because that's going back to the time, and I'm sure some of the older members will, will remember when we used to have the electric fences around the greens. And we used to play through the cattle and the sheep. And and he puts quite a comical comment in, in his book about uh, catching one of the fences. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get away with that today now, Colonel, in fairness. Um, <laughs> I have, I have well, to say, just on course records, I saw a card uh, yesterday, it was sent to me, um, from a young guy, uh, Darcy Hogg, who I think he's playing off scratch. And would you believe he was, uh, he played the front nine of his home course in nine under par, which was just phenomenal. And no hole in ones. It was birdies. It was eagles. I think he had two eagles. And he finished the round. I think it finished at 65, which was about seven, seven, uh, six or seven over. And, and he had uh, bogeys in the last two holes. So phenomenal talent. Uh, mm. Just absolutely incredible. So on, on that score, Probably front there, Alistair. Tell us about Alistair the golfer and, and how often do you play? And have you ever shot seven under? I, I, I did one night, but, but I think I might have been dreaming that night, you know. Unfortunately, I, I would play, try to get out twice a week. Times I would get out three times, times I would get out once, but uh, twice a week, you need to get out uh, at least twice to. Keep your game in reasonably good shape, you know. Uh, as far as I'd be concerned, you know, if you're not out, yeah, your short game would go downhill very, very quickly, you know. Uh, and what are you playing off at the moment then? I'm I'm playing of 18 at the moment. Uh, this new handicap, which, uh, they, they developed a, a new handicap for us, and it's 20, and then you're playing of 19, but then when you're playing golf, you're playing of 18. Uh, it's, it's sort of confusing, this new handicap. For, you seem to have a, a handicap index, and then you have a, a, a playing handicap, and then you have a course handicap. You know, it's, yeah. uh, it, it will work itself out, but uh, at at the moment, it's, it's a wee bit confusing for us older guys. I don't know how you get on with it, Connell, but it, it really confuses me. I, I'm not playing you for money anyway. No, I get away with that. <laughs> the, the only good thing about it is the way it will work is you'll go to Narn and Port New, and you'll you'll probably be playing off twenty two. Um, and if you come down to Dunfanaghy, you'll be off 10. I'm yeah. only joking. You'll actually be off probably for, uh, 16 or 17. Yeah. Um, what's the best part of your game then? What's what's the strongest part of your game, Alistair? The strongest part of my game? Yeah. I think it's possibly uh, the uh, 19th. I'd be very good uh, at times at the 19th, but out on the golf course uh, itself, uh, uh, handy enough out of the bunkers, you know, but... The rest of the game's not in great shape. It takes me too many getting into the bunkers at the minute, but I can usually get out of them okay then, you know. But I would say my bunker play would bunker and putting wouldn't be too bad. I, I would love to. I, do you know what? I'd love to actually bring that last bit into my game. The putting that would be my uh, my Achilles heel. Um, and do you man? Do you get to play more uh, other courses? Do you travel? Oh yeah, I get a good bit of golf now during the the summer time. I've been I've played Port New there last year, uh, the the redeveloped course, and uh, yeah, it's it's nice. There are few of the holes very long uh, for us older guys, and uh, as uh, Connell was saying, no, the jury probably would be out in a few of the holes, but uh, they've shortened the was it the fourteenth and fifteenth used yeah. to be. The two long par fives going up, and then they've, they've put a, a par three in between. So that's that's in there, isn't it? Uh, that's, that's correct. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, as, uh, 
Connell was saying that the, uh, that 18 seems to be a long, long way down there. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, I would say it's the most of 600 yards. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what length it is, but I remember I had a lot of shots trying to get home on, on it the last day it was done. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but, uh, Rory McIlroy, that Rory McIlroy, that will be a drive and probably an eight iron. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just the last one, just and, and I'm doing this for a reason. Hopefully, your your four balls will be will be tuning in to uh, to the podcast. Who's the most competitive player you uh, you play with? Are you talking to me? Yes. You asked me, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, this is a fella that I played. Uh, I haven't played so much with him lately, but is a, a guy I used to play a good. But was a, a guy called Andy Parkinson, and Andy would be ultra competitive. Uh, you know, a euro would be a euro, uh, Andy. Uh, but see, once you get him off the course, a grand fella again. But see, when he goes on the course, the red mist seems to come down, and uh, yeah, he's he, he can be very ultra competitive, you know. But I's a great, a great guy at the same time. Great to have him. What about your uh, yourself, Connell? Have you uh, a major competitor in your four ball? Well, yeah, well, I don't know about my four ball, they're 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 sort of hackers like myself you know uh, i don't want to be given blowing any of them up but there is one guy in our club and actually uh, i'm glad to get this opportunity uh to 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 mention him um uh, he's actually from bal buffet he's harry reed and harry would be a very 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 competitive the most competitive little guy i've ever come across unfortunately harry has been going some through, through some treatment over the past while doing very well and we're looking so forward to seeing Harry back on the back on the links sitting here in Port New. So um if he's listening, Harry, we're looking we're yeah. we're, yeah, we're fingers Harry crossed for you. And I'm sure you're the same Alistair. We're all looking forward to seeing him back on the links. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I wish Harry all the best. Harry's brother was our captain uh, quite a few years ago, uh, uh mm -hmm. John. And yeah, Harry was always competitive. He always looked after the senior guys down there and uh, yeah. Hopefully we'll see him back in the fairway soon. And a, a very good golfer as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I, I'll add to that as well, that uh, it would be great to, to, to get him back out there. Um, Connor, what's the favourite club in the bag then? What's the one that saves you? Um, <laughs> probably the wedge. Yeah. Now, how many greens. wedges do you have? Are you one of those? I, have, I, I actually have three. Yeah. Okay. So I use three different lofts and different types, but I'm... Ah, Look, I used to be better than I am. As you get older, things get stiffer and we don't hit it as far. And we, uh, I'm a bit like Alistair. I'm very, very good at 19th as well. You know, we do we do play very well in there. <laughs> yeah, we can't wait for that to open as well because that's yeah. an integral part of golf. Yeah. It's about yeah. the bragging rights when you get back in the clubhouse of, of uh, the good shots. You don't remember the bad shots, but it's all about the good shots. Talking about those type of shots on a Lynx course for, for guys that are going to come to Narn and Port New, is there a shot, a special shot that you need to use more on a Lynx course as you would in a parkland? Yeah, well, I would I would see that a lot because we would play a lot of parkland, Bal Buffet, and that. Uh, we would use a, a lot of bump and run, you know, uh, around the greens, but you'll not do that on the parkland, you know, it's good. And, and it catches us out every time we're there. You, you need to throw the ball into the green and, 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 but in, in Port New, you, if you know the lie of the land and you know the, the bumps and hollows and where to throw it, uh, it's a big advantage to you, you know. Uh, maybe not so much now then, the fact that the, the, a lot of the holes are new and we're, only get, we're all getting used to them. But on the old course, when you played it regularly, you kind of knew where not to go and where to. Yeah, so uh, I think that the bump and run is the one on the links, you know. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It's it's uh, mm. it, and it doesn't work on Parkland because I've seen no, some of our guys move into Parkland and still try to play the seven iron, and, and yeah. it just they go into Alistair's place, which is is the bunker. What's your mm. uh, final question for you, Connor? What's your biggest achievement in golf? Whew. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's, I find that a hard one. You know, I've been playing for uh, for forty odd years. Uh, I love the game. We, we tend to go off foreign where we used to before the pandemic to Spain, Portugal, gangs of us and play golf and, and have the banter. Um, you know, I don't think there's any one achievement that that I could put my finger on it. I just love the game, love the camaraderie ship going out, love going to other clubs and meeting other people and, 
I think in, in Donegal, what, what, what I would miss most at the moment would be the inter-club competitions, you know, even the seniors or the minor league or should it be uh, the Pierce Purcell or whatever. All those competitions, you know, it's great to get to meet guys, you get to play with other people. And that's the great thing about, about golf and you get the banter going and, and, and you get to know. And that's how I've met Alistair and all those people down through the years, through inter-club competitions. And, you know, we've had some great battles and some great, you know, afterwards maybe sit at the bar and have a few pints, discuss and have the crack. We all miss that. I think that's one of the biggest things we all miss. Yeah, and it's it, the good news is is actually it's coming back. It, it, I was looking at the draws this week, and mm. uh, everything is is looking good for starting kind of mid June towards the end of June. So uh, I'm with you. I I love the inter club competition. I love going yeah. away to different clubs. It's it's you know you've got an unfair advantage uh, being you know be, being the home club because as you say, Connell, it's that mm. links course where you don't know where to land the ball. But that's the challenge that as golfers we we love that it, we just mm. embrace that. Yeah. Um, tell me this over the years, you must have a funny story for me. Oh well, I think the the one that 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 remains that I think probably remains as most would be one day the uh, we had the uh, it was the Ulster Cup, and it was in in Grace Hill, I think, in up in, in Northern Ireland. And our, our captain, a good friend of mine, uh, had a team went up on the, I think it was the Friday or the Saturday, to do a practice round and play the uh, competition. Obviously, it's single match play. Um, during the course of the day, something happened and one of the guys had to go home and he was a player down. And he couldn't actually get... Uh, another player to to play. We was ringing around guys of commitments made and that. So he ended up having to settle on a seventeen handicapper. Uh, seventeen handicapper had to drive up in the middle of the night. Uh, was given a very uh, nice team introduction in the fact that the confidence vote was very high, and he was told that he would be put out first because his. Uh, They'd be putting out their best player first, and he was going to lose anyway. Turns out the individual concern went out first. I think he was three down after three, but he actually won his match on the 18th. And the ironic thing about it was everyone else got beat. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Now, the man that listened to this will know who this is about. And I'm not going to say anymore. <laughs> all, all I can I just add would would that be um, your biggest achievement in golf by any chance, Connell? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a great and that's a great story because uh, yeah. as you well know, it, it's playing against somebody who is you know seven, eight, ten shots better than you. It's it's tough. It's really tough. Mm -hmm. Although they'll think it's the reverse because they're giving you shots, but in fact. The pressure really is on the the the, the, the higher handicapper. So um, if it, if it was you or whoever it was, well done, fantastic story. Well, what have you heard yourself, Alistair? Have you uh, have you a funny one for me? Uh, yeah. Well, going back to my greatest achievement in golf, uh, it would be a team thing that happened all the way back in '96. Um, I was the team captain for Val Buffet in the Pierce Purcell and uh, we had a good run. We got all the way through to the All-Ireland Finals and uh, the finals were played actually in Port Stewart that year and we played a team from Kenturk in the semi-final and it wasn't looking good. Uh, we were down in four matches with about three holes to play and uh, the the, 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 the captain of Kenturkey was on this mobile phone. I don't know where he got a mobile phone from at that, them days, but it was the size of a, a brick, so it was, and they were phoning away. And eventually he said to them, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, it looks as if we're through here now. We're three up with four to play and there's no way that we're going to lose this. Unfortunately for him, our guys uh, starting back and about an hour later, he had a phone back and tell them, you better cancel that bus for 
we didn't make the final. So unfortunately, we got to well, we got to the final, and I I could be corrected, but I think it's the first male team in Donegal to get to an All Ireland final. But unfortunately, we played a team called St Ange. Uh, from uh, Dublin, and they were far too strong for us, so they gave us a, a bit of a beating the next day. You know, um, what else? Were you, you were asking me something else then? Oh, a funny story, yeah. Uh, we normally go out to Florida there in November for a bit of golf. There's a group of us who goes out most years or every year, basically. We didn't get out last year with the pandemic, but one of the years, about uh, six or seven years ago, we were traveling out, and uh, when we got to our villa, the, unfortunately, there was no key left for us. The key was supposed to be in the security box outside. And when we got there, there were no keys. So we decided we would uh, put all our gear in around the back of the, the villa. There's a cage in around there that you have fits. And uh, we were all taking our stuff in, and uh, all of a sudden, one of our guys, it was first time there, he had a golf bag over his shoulder and his, he had his luggage bag with him. Next thing, we didn't tell him there's a swimming pool inside the cage. So next thing, poor Charlie ended up upside down in the swimming pool with his golf clubs, his bag and everything else. And uh, it was a bit of a mess for poor Charlie, but uh, uh, we got him fished out again anyway. And... Uh, Eventually, we, we, we would have a, a race to the airport. It's this, it's our version of uh, the, the, the race to Dubai, you know. And Charlie ended up winning the, the race to the airport. He got a fistful of dollars. And he was happy enough at the end up. His phone came back to life, I think, about three weeks later. And uh, then last year, when there, not last year, the year before, we weren't out last year, Charlie got revenge on all of us for he had a hole in one. I think it was on the 12th hole in a place called Highland Reserve. So there was <coughs> a lot of celebrating going on. We relieved him a few of those dollars that day. That's what it's all about. And and I suppose that golf is about, yeah, it's competitive, but it, it has to be that humorous part too. I have a great guy that I, I played with over in Scotland, and I must share the story that um, he was a bit of a messer. And uh, we we always played on a Sunday morning first thing, so uh, he told us on the Saturday we were playing, the, 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 or the week before, sorry, that he had a wedding on. And we said, oh, there's no chance you'll be here for, uh, for early tee off. I says, oh, no, guys, I wouldn't, I wouldn't let you down. I'll make it. So we go to the next Sunday, and, and uh, I think it was about quarter to eight, we were teeing off, and no sign of Jock at all. He's not there. And we said, oh, we knew it. We, I told you it was not going to happen. He wouldn't show up. Next thing, he runs up towards the, the, um, the tee box. And uh, shoes half on, and you could see he's had a late night. And he said, guys, told you I'd be here. So he goes to stand up on the tea box, right? And the three of us are standing watching. He puts the tea peg down. And to this day, I swear, he didn't put a, he didn't put a golf ball on the tee. And he hit the ball, or he hit the tea peg. And he said, that's perfect. That's up the middle on the left-hand side of the fairway. And I looked at one of the boys and says, he didn't hit a ball there. And the other guy says, he says, oh, no, I didn't see it. We, we asked the other, the third guy, he says, uh, he says, well, it sounded all right. He said, I can't say that I saw a ball or not, but he said it sounded okay. So I mean, we were confused and we said, said to Jock, there's no way you hit a ball. We didn't see a golf ball. And he said, lads, I'm telling you, up on the left-hand side of the fairway, it's about 70 yards off the green. So we said, right, okay, well, let's go up and see and prove, prove it to us. Lo and behold, about 75 yards on the left-hand side, there's the ball sitting there exactly where he said he put it. And we looked at each other and we said, but he didn't hit a ball. So we had to accept it. And he chipped and he potted, and I think he got a four and walked off and uh, his, his game went downhill thereafter. But it wasn't until about, it could have been about three or four weeks thereafter. We, we, we were out and we were in a taxi. And the taxi driver, who obviously knew us, he said, How's Jock getting on? And we said, Jock's great. I will play him golf with him tomorrow. He's some boy. He says, I've never in my life seen somebody come home, come home from a wedding and ask me to take him to the golf club at three or four o'clock in the morning. And what he did, he actually 
got dropped off at the golf club and he walked up the fairway and he placed the ball on the fairway or the left 75 years or yards on the left hand side and then walked home and the whole idea was to prove that number one he would make it but was to wind us up totally and we never we never knew and we actually accepted the par four on the day but that's the type of them and it was just amazing and, and it wasn't and, and of course when we got the story we we uh we, we got our own back because what we yeah. did is we we uh we pretended that when he hit a great drive we didn't see that we couldn't find that and but a great character he always had something up his sleeve to to keep you on your toes um so and i suppose in in what what golf was all about is yes we we want to be winners but it's the camaraderie it's how we enjoy it and the mixing uh and, and the 19th as you mentioned guys as well just want to test their your your uh your knowledge of golf now so you got to listen carefully. If I hit my first shot into the rough, okay, the ball is embedded. I take a drop and I hit my next shot into the drain. I'm having a bad day so far. I take another drop and I hit a lovely shot which lands in the bunker. A nice chip to 10 feet and two putt. How many shots did I take? Seven. Eight. Seven, eight. Oh, I wish I had a, a third person here. Um, you're actually, Alistair's correct. He's actually seven. I think, Connor, what you may have done is you may have the embedded ball. You may mm. have counted a penalty shot for that. Yes. No, that's gone. That's, uh, that's gone. Uh, that's no, yeah. no longer part of the rules. So uh, um, yeah, yeah. that is 100% correct. We, we mentioned uh, earlier about the World Handicap System and the challenges that it, it will provide going forward. And I suppose the timing has been difficult because of the lockdown on the courses. Alistair, do you think it's a fair system that, that has been brought in? Was that the handicap system you're talking about? Yeah, the new so the new World Handicap System. I, I, I think it'll take a while to get everybody up to speed on it, but it, it can only be a good thing for golf for, you know, Every place you go now, at uh, every course, like uh, if we go down to Port New or go to Port Sound or Dunfanaghy, uh, our our golf uh, our slope rating is one hundred five or whatever, and every every course you go to it will have a different slope rating, and uh, your handicap will be adjusted accordingly. And I think it can only be a good thing. Uh, there, uh, if you go to the like uh, we go out to America there. And they could have uh, maybe five different tee boxes, you know, and you just pick your one and uh, it, 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 it will be a good job. It, it'll have tees and problems, uh, of course, but I think once we get going, it will be a good job. Yeah, I tend to agree. It's 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 going to take a bit of time to embed in. Well, Connell, would that be the same opinion down in um, Narnan Port New as well? Absolutely, yeah, I'd agree with that. I like some of the changes now that they made things like like you can ground your you can ground your club in a hazard and stuff like that. There, you know, because some some of the rules were a little bit, uh, you know, too. Uh, I don't know what the word is for it, but now, you know, golf should be enjoyable, you know, and it. I don't think anybody goes out there to 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 flout the rules. But I mean, some of the rules that they had were a little bit ridiculous, and and now that you know they're making these changes, I think it's a good thing. The handicap system, yeah, I agree. I think it'll take some time to bed in, and for people to get used to it. Um, still not used to it myself. Uh, the old way was, for me, it was easier. But but you know, th then again, it maybe it, the slope rating thing is. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I think it will encourage people to to play other courses as well because they'll want to go and see um, with the extra shots, does it make them a better player? Um, Alistair, I just want to come to you on uh, something you're heavily involved with. It's a charity event uh, with um, the Friends of Letterkenny Hospital. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, my daughter got me involved with uh, that about uh, eight or nine years ago. I think maybe 2013 was her first year. And it has grown every year since that uh, first few years. We weren't too sure what we were doing. You know, we were only testing the water and stuff like that. 
And uh, over the last number of years there now, we've been raising in the region of 15 or 16,000 each year. So we're hoping to get break through the 100,000 barrier this year. Um, the Friends of Letter Kenny, they, they have a great committee in there, Cynthia Fury and all her gang. Look, I'm not going to mention them all, but they all know who they are, and they do sterling work in there, uh, getting that off the ground. What I do, I, I try to uh, fill up the timesheet, and I do it from our side here, and they go out and uh, they get the sponsorship and stuff like that. Uh, as I was talking to Cynthia there just last week, and uh, our main sponsors is Crumley Appliance, and they're on board this uh, year again. We're hoping to run the event. Well, all things, uh, as long as things stay the way they are, we're, we have it uh, penciled in for the 26th, Friday the 26th of June. And I know Connie and all those guys, they usually give me good support and all the quins down there and all those guys. And uh, there'll be plenty of times on the timesheet we'll be going from 8 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock in the evening. So anybody who wishes to get their name down, I'll have the timesheet in operation, possibly the beginning of June. So. Excellent. Uh, you know Excellent. our number. Yeah. Good, good and, stuff. And you, Look forward to it. Yeah, yeah, they can just get in touch with Alistair at the golf club, can they? Yeah, yeah, um, 9131093, and uh, I'll uh, on my personal phone and I'll give it out because everybody will be phoning me, It'll be charging me as <laughs> well. Uh, but uh, if you want to give me a buzz anytime, I'll get just on the timesheet. No, that's Good that's really great, it's a great cause, and, and I actually look forward to playing it myself, gentlemen. Um, we've we've run out of time, it's been great. Um, Alistair Henderson and Connell Kinney. Thank you very much for taking the time today to come on and talk all things golf. It's been great hearing about your stories, about your clubs, about the the, the opportunities going forward um, and everything that is to do with golf. I want to also thank today's sponsors, Creative Landscaping Works, um, who helped create golf courses on your own back garden. Um, check them out on creativelandscapingworks.com. Today, just to remind people that there is a competition. Um, who is the reigning US Open champion? And you can email into hitting the fairways at highlandradio.com. Uh, There's a great prize. You can we'll give you a pot and mass, which should you can, as I said earlier, you can go in your garden, in your office, in the, in the garage, and it'll help you to to stop those three pots. To all the listeners, good luck in the coming weeks as we hit the competitions on the golf course. And remember, from me, Sean Quinn, keep the ball on the fairway.